All right, in this demo we're going to be looking at how we can use an in-particle system to generate a missile trail, and I've done a good bit of the prep work for it. So there's a missile and a camera attached to the missile. The missile has a volume emitter, just a cylinder emitter, pretty simple inside of it, that's uh, spitting out the particles. The particles <clears throat> come out, they're set to render with a thick cloud type. So if you look at the attributes for the particle, the majority of their look and feel is derived, if you look at the shading attributes, from uh, normalized age, so there's a two second lifespan, they drop off in opacity, uh, they get darker, and then there's incandescence piped into that. So because it's thick cloud, that means that it's going to be using a fluid shape. So each individual particle will be rendered with a fluid. So if we go ahead and we look at the fluid shape, you can see that uh, the lighting for this, I've turned off real lights. This makes it about 10 times faster. It doesn't look quite as good, but for a demo, it's, it's good enough. I've got the new ambient bright turned on, and the light bright's pretty uh, pretty strong, so it's being backlit really hard, so it kind of matches the environment. If you go and you look at the opacity for this, it's being um, textured with color, and opacity is a space-time texture. We're using a little bit of a, a central grading on that, so it's going to be a puffball where each one of these is, and there's a relatively sharp spike from transparent to opaque, <clears throat> Which is going to give a good bit of surface detail on each individual particle, kind of the little blob that's going to get rendered with that fluid. So it's kind of like Afterburn, where it's a volumetric fluid renderer instanced onto each particle. And if you look at things like incandescence, color, and opacity, these guys are all being driven by this particle sampler info node. So it's taking the information from the particle system and passing it into the fluid shape and individually calculating each particle's um, color, incandescence, and transparency based on age. So if we render this out, we don't need to have the jets on in here, so we'll just turn those guys off and we just do a, a quick render on this. I don't have a lot of particles being emitted and this is again just uh, to, to illustrate the points that we're trying to make with the presentation. The fluid shape is going to be very clearly um, displayed on each particle and you're going to notice that there's no randomness to it. So the overall effect of each one of these guys is the exact same little fluid ball. Boom, boom, boom. You can see that it's the same exact shape down each one of those guys. So what we want to do is we want to modify that in a couple of different ways. We're going to be using some new attributes that were added to the particle system, the ability to calculate rotation based on collision to modify it. That's going to be the main thing that we're showing. So let's go ahead and, and talk about how we can visualize that. So since we want to look at rotation per particle, it's kind of hard to see uh, rotational values on these little spheres, these little kind of soft cloud balls that are displayed in the viewport. So the easiest way to display that that I find is to just do a particle instancer onto there with just a cube. I've got a cube in my scene already set up. If you look at the attributes for this, you'll notice it is not going to render. So we're going to take this particle cube, we're going to instance it into this particle system. We'll bring up the replacer and it's the cube that we want to instance. You'll notice that I've got the rotation set to rotation PP, pretty straightforward there. The scale we want to have being driven by the radius per particle. It doesn't show up in the list by default, so you need to go ahead and say allow all data types, and you can see now that radius PP is there. So scale is being driven by the radius per particle. Rotation is being driven by the new rotation per particle attribute that's again calculated based on collision. So we'll go ahead and uh, we'll just say apply. You can see that now our little cubes come in there, and let's play this back. So they're shooting off screen pretty quick. Let's start to modify a couple of the attributes on this particle system. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to turn on uh, collision. We'll turn self collide on. We'll play this back. You can see that they're kind of puffing off of each other now as they collide with each other, and they're shooting off screen really, really fast, so it's going to be hard for us to see the rotational values on those. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the inherent factor and increase that a good bit. So this is going to slow down the effect. This isn't what I'd want to do for, for the final render, obviously, but to visualize it and see what's really going on, it, it just makes these particles move off screen a little bit slower. Let's go ahead and decrease that self-collision radius so that they kind of puff back down on top of each other a little bit. I'll put that to a value of 0.6. So we'll play this back and you can see that here comes our particle system out. They kind of die off. And what we want to do is we want to get that rotation being calculated based on that collision. So this is really easy to do. It's just a button. You turn that on. We'll put the friction up to a very high value. We'll drop the dampening down a little bit, and we'll play this back again. So now you can see that these particles are obviously all getting this nice rotational value happening, getting passed into there, again, based on the collision. If we render this, the problem that you're going to see is that even though we're calculating it on, the, on our 
cube and on the particle level we haven't passed that information into the texture for the fluid shape. So these fluids obviously still have the same exact pattern. You can really see the evidence of it there, 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 there. It's basically all the same little little puff balls in the exact same shape. So we need to pass this information into the fluid shape. And if you remember previously when we looked at the way color, incandescence, and transparency were being driven was with that particle sampler info node. So what we want to do is we want to get the rotation per particle into a form that the particle sampler info node can pass it into the fluid texture's rotation value. This is really simple to do. We're going to go ahead and just add a new dynamic attribute. We're going to add a vector attribute, a uh, user vector one per particle. We'll add that guy in there. And we want this user vector one per particle to basically be equal to the rotation per particle. So we're just kind of going to use our connection editor to do that. If we select this guy and say uh, reload left, we get the shape node, we'll reload right. If you scroll to the bottom of the list here, you'll see that we have the rotation per particle. And we're going to have that drive our newly added vector per particle. So just like that, you can see now that user 1pp one, one is equal to the rotation per particle. So this puts it into a form that the particle sampler info node can pass on to the fluid shape. So let's go ahead and bring up our, let's select our fluid, Oop, wrong fluid, we'll grab this fluid. We'll bring up our hypershade window, we'll graph that guy, the inputs and the outputs. So you can see this particle sampler info is already driving uh, a good bit of stuff, transparency, incandescence, and color. We want the same thing to also drive the texture rotational value on this, uh, on this space-time texture. So all we have to do is drag and drop this on here to texture rotation. It brings up the list saying, I don't know how to do it. What do you want to grab? We want to grab user one vector per particle that is basically the equivalent of rotation per particle and have that drive our texture rotate. So we can close all this stuff down. We can rewind this guy. We can play it back. Here comes our stuff spitting out, rotating around. Go ahead and do a quick render of this guy and you'll notice that the rotational values now are being passed into the fluid texture so it'll be a little bit more random and from here we can begin to uh, to further refine this and fine-tune it so you can see that different different patterns are getting passed on into these texture maps um, into these into these textures based on that rotational value so that's uh, that's basically it hopefully it makes sense